tell, you tell me, Stoney. You should probably be asking Gailey that, to be honest. I mean, come on, <laughs> taking, taking Yorkshire up. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, I think it's it's a real mixture of things. Um, I think a lot of the things that I've seen are the you know the on-field stuff that setting the field and changing the bowling. But I think having done it for a year, that's probably a very small percentage of it. I think a lot of it is the the man management side of things, the the stuff off the field that nobody tells you about when you take the job, um, all those sort of things, and just just balancing all that out. Plus, of course, being able to control your own, own game as well. I mean, there's nothing worse as a captain than you know trying to instill in other in other people that they you know they should be playing well when you're in a bad trot. So you know that's probably one of the, the most important things to look after your own game, and then and then a lot of it, I suppose, is is doing it on the hoof and sort of working out what needs to be done. And yeah, I mean, I'm still learning, as I'm sure as I'm sure Gailey is as well. It's a it's a constant thing, I think. So. Andrew, did you? Did you have lots? Of, did you take lots of advice when you were given the captaincy? Did you go looking for it? Did people come to you with it? I think being Yorkshire captain, you're always given a lot of advice, um, and I did seek some advice as well. You know, I spent quite a while with Michael Vaughan talking about captaincy to him, um, Jeffrey Boycott as well. Um, but ultimately, you want to put your own stamp on things. Um, but I think you know the, the first and foremost thing as captain is having the respect to the players around you. Um, and sometimes you can be the best captain in the world, but you need the players on the pitch with you, and you need them to perform the skills under pressure. And if you know if you haven't got that, then you know you're renowned as the worst captain or the best captain for winning. Um, you know, like like Mark says, you know the the little things of making changes in the field or changing the ball. In, yeah, it counts for a little bit, but ultimately, if the lads don't execute the skills, then you know you, you, you you're not. Judged, you judged on that really, whether you win or lose, whether the lads are performing. Mm -hmm. That step up from being one of the lads, or part of the ranks, to being captain, I mean, sort of something you've got to come. <coughs> yeah. But there must be a, you know, a point where that separation, where you, you are in charge, rather than of guys that you were mates with a few months previous. I think that I, I've gone into it sort of thinking, well, you know, there's a, there's a reason you've been asked. You know, when you got given the cap, both got given the captaincy, there was a, a reason that it ends up at your doorstep. Is that people feel you're the right person for the role, and probably over the previous couple of years, you've displayed some kind of traits that people think would be good uh, for captaincy. So, for me, I, I'm under no illusions, that, you know, how difficult it's going to be, but I'm I'm quite stubborn and determined for. For, for things for me personally, to try not to change too much. Um, I'm sure there's times, you, you guys will know, I'm sure there's times when I need to maybe separate myself from the odd thing, but you know, I want to stay one of the lads as much as I can, but I think for me, with, with the captaincy, I, I want it to be a case of, that. that's great, still having that banter and that side of everything, which I don't want to lose, but once we step over the white line, it's work time and you know, I expect people to work hard and, and, and deliver, hopefully. Have you guys had issues with, with you know, that separation of people not, you know, to that respect of the players and kind of that, any issues with that uh, players? I think it, I found it's a, quite a tight line, really, between sort of being too much on the management or being too much with the players. You know, you're often asked to attend management meetings and talk about players and stuff and... But you still want to go for a beer with them lads, you know, after the game, and for them to respect you, and you've got to make them feel like you're still one of them. Um, there are times when you have to take a step back as well, you know. If if some lads want a night out and they don't feel that they can let their hair down, if you're there, you, you do have to separate yourself. Um, that might be a test for you. <laughs> <laughs> let your hair down, or a well, step back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is tough, and I think that's. The balance that you have to find out for yourself, and I think I've I've done both sides of it really. It's, it's taken me a while to find that balance because ultimately you're the, you're the guy, you and the coach that makes the decision on the final eleven. And if you've played with a guy for ten years and you're leaving him out, um, that's a tough decision to make.